This year marks the 35th anniversary of Metroid, the lovable, bounty-hunting, genre-defining child that Nintendo loves to forget about. Except, to everyone's surprise, Nintendo did remember this year, and are celebrating with Metroid 5, aka Metroid Dread, the first brand new 2D Metroid game in... Wow, that's a long time. So long, in fact, that there is a whole generation of people that have never experienced just how goddamn good classic Metroid is, and are looking at all the excitement Dread is causing, and they're curious. Y'all got a little over a month to catch up, which might seem like a daunting proposition, but I got you. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through each mainline Metroid game, not the spinoffs, talk about if they're worth playing, and then detail the best legal way to play them. If you can, paying studios for their games is always the way to go, but I know Nintendo has no interest in making much of its older catalog available on its modern hardware, particularly Metroid games. So you do what you gotta do. For this video, I'll detail the best Nintendo-approved options available for you. Unfortunately, that does mean buying a Wii U. Ah yes, the original Metroid, the game that started it all 35 years back on the Nintendo Entertainment System. You play as bounty hunter Samus Aran, tasked with exploring the planet Zebus and infiltrating the lair of Mother Brain, leader of these space pirates who are trying to weaponize deadly creatures known as Metroids. Metroid was groundbreaking in its day, putting players in a massive open space with an unprecedented amount of freedom. Without any in-game map to guide you, you needed to make your own. This created the sense of being a true explorer, discovering and mapping out this world for yourself, something only a few games capture. It also makes the planet of Zebus feel like a hostile and alien world you must conquer. The more time you spend playing, the greater your knowledge and mastery becomes. This feeling would grow into a central component of the Metroidvania genre. While Metroid lays the groundwork for the games to come, unfortunately, it is a difficult game to recommend in 2021. The lack of a map is certainly a part of the appeal, but this does create a much higher barrier of entry for those that don't have the patience. It doesn't help that certain progression is gated by lucking your way into hidden paths that can be near impossible to find without a guide. It's also just really difficult in a more frustrating than fun kind of way. It's really easy to find yourself lacking enough missile ammo for a boss or needing to spend time grinding out health drops from enemies, with dying kicking you all the way back to the start of the level without refilling your supply. It's not to say you can't enjoy this game, but it demands a level of patience most players don't have these days, and I would only recommend it to those that are interested in its challenge. But if you are that kind of person, or at least want to check it out for yourself, this is a pretty easy one to get your hands on without having to buy a cart on eBay. If you have a Nintendo Online subscription, you get Metroid as a part of the selection of NES games available. There's even versions that start you at the fight against Ridley or Turian. Other options for playing Metroid include buying it digitally on the 3DS or the Wii U. It's also a part of the NES Classic, but good luck finding one of those for a reasonable price these days. Metroid 2 Return of Samus wouldn't release on home consoles, but rather on Nintendo's handheld, the Game Boy. Your goal is to eradicate all of the Metroids on the planet SR388, the species homeworld. Using your Metroid detector, you must explore the planet to find and kill every Metroid. Much of what makes Metroid... Metroid is still here. A large open-ended map to explore, secrets to uncover, and new abilities and upgrades to find. But all in the palm of your hand. And yes, Metroid 2 was an impressive experience for a handheld back then, but the considerations needed to make it work on the Game Boy are what hold it back today. The limited pixels rendered on screen make the game feel claustrophobic and the world hard to navigate, despite being a simpler map this time around. And while the game's Metroid evolutionary stages, which make up the bosses you encounter, are pretty cool, they do often repeat and quickly become repetitive. It's not a bad game, but it's not 
noteworthy enough to recommend today. You're better off playing one of its several remakes, either the official 3DS one, which we'll talk about later, or the brilliant fan make AM2R. Just don't tell Nintendo. However, if you are interested in checking out Metroid 2 Return of Samus, your only official option outside of owning an original copy is to pick it up on the Nintendo 3DS for $3.99. But now we move on to the big one. It's kind of hard to know what to say considering so much has already been said about the legendary Super Metroid. It takes everything about the original Metroid, expands it and refines it, creating what many consider to be one of the greatest games ever made, and defining the genre that would later be known as Metroidvania. The interconnected map of Zebus features some brilliant level design, and is a masterclass at expertly guiding the players through the game without telling you where to go next. Hidden secrets and upgrades slowly open up more to explore, giving you this wonderful sensation of becoming more powerful and mastering the game. The hallmarks of what make a great Metroidvania all started right here with Super Metroid. What's most impressive to me about Super Metroid is how contemporary it feels. There have been plenty of improvements to the Metroidvania genre over the years, but so much of what that genre is was defined by Super Metroid. So most of the game's mechanics, boss, and level designs, and story don't feel dated. They could have been released only a few years ago, and it would have easily fit right at home with the other modern-day Metroidvanias. Super Metroid ends up being a perfect example that just because a game is old doesn't mean it feels old. It's a classic for a reason, and you should absolutely give it a try if you're interested in this series. Thankfully, it's also really easy to get. Like with Metroid 1, if you have a Nintendo Online subscription, you have access to Super Metroid on the Nintendo Switch. You can also pick it up on the Nintendo 3DS or Wii U for $7.99. The series would then rotate back to the handheld for Metroid 4, called Metroid Fusion. But unlike Metroid 2, Fusion would be released on the Game Boy Advance, which was powerful enough to bring SNES-level quality on the go. Fusion is a great game, albeit it's very different to Super Metroid in some key ways. While much of the Metroid formula remains, the game is far more linear in structure, with a set order of objectives. You'll never be confused where to go next, as Samus has her ship AI telling her where to go and what her objective is. This leaves the open exploration for gathering extra upgrades. This can be a major turnoff for those that enjoy player freedom as part of a Metroid experience, but it's still extremely well done and comes with the benefit of a more involved story and scripted moments. Fusion is the first Metroid title to really push its narrative in a major way outside of its opening. You'll hear Samus ponder her feelings during elevator rides, and she frequently interacts with her ship AI, Adam. Fusion also delves into horror, most famously with the SAX a parasite that has taken over Samus' original suit and stalks you throughout the game. Fusion's combat is also superb. The controls all have a much tighter feel than Super Metroid, and it feels so damn good to play. It also makes up for its more linear structure by being rather difficult. Outside of a few moments, Super Metroid isn't all that difficult, but Fusion, on the other hand, is the toughest of the classic Metroids, but like in a good way. Fusion is on the opposite end of the Metroid experience when compared to Super Metroid, and the game often gets overlooked, probably because it was released within a day of Metroid Prime. But I think Fusion is also one of the more unique Metroid experiences and absolutely worth playing. Unfortunately, Fusion is one of the more difficult Metroid titles to get your hands on. You can only play it on the 3DS if you happen to be part of the 3DS Ambassadors program back in 2011, for those of you who remember that, and otherwise there have been no official plans to release the game on the Nintendo Switch. But you are in luck if you happen to own a Wii U, where it is available for $7.99. The emulation of GBA games on the Wii U is actually really good in my opinion, and it does make a great place to play Fusion. In fact, after the announcement of Metroid Dread, Fusion topped the charts on the Wii U store page, along with the other Metroid GBA title, Zero Mission. A remake of the original Metroid, Zero Mission takes all of the improvements from Super Metroid and the smooth combat of Fusion and applies it to the first game, and it is magnificent. 
I said earlier that you can safely skip the original Metroid, and that's because you should play Zero Mission instead. I have a special place in my heart for this game, as it was actually my first ever Metroid title, and what made me fall in love with the series in the first place. In fact, I think it's actually the perfect place to start. It carries over the objective waypoints of Fusion while also being more open-ended, sort of a middle ground between that game and Super Metroid. It's also not as difficult as Fusion, striking what I think is a perfect balance. It may not be as open-ended as Super Metroid, but I think it's such a beautifully paced game and one that shouldn't be missed. Just like with Fusion, your only official option is to pick it up on the Wii U store. Hopefully, Nintendo releases Zero Mission and Fusion on other platforms like the Switch before the Wii U store inevitably closes and these amazing titles are lost to time. We still got one more 2D Metroid to talk about near the end, but the release of Zero Mission marked the end of classic 2D Metroid games for the time. The series transitioned over to 3D during the 2000s with the Metroid Prime Trilogy. If you're watching this video specifically because of your interest in Dread, the Prime games are kind of their own thing and maybe more relevant to check out closer to the release of Metroid Prime 4. But that doesn't mean the Prime games should be passed up. Developer Retro Studios did what was thought to be impossible at the time and translated Metroid into a 3D space without losing what made it special. You would think the switch to a first-person perspective would turn Metroid into a more action-shooter title, but in reality, it's a first-person adventure all about exploring, platforming, puzzle-solving, with combat only playing one part, just like with the rest of the series. By being directly behind the eyes of Samus, Prime is able to add new elements like multiple visors, including a scanning feature that gives you information about all the objects and creatures in the world. Due to the one analog stick nature of the GameCube, Prime has a unconventional control scheme that might throw new players off, but the game is built in such a way that this works perfectly. You can feel the weight of the massive suit Samus has to walk around in, and I'm hard-pressed to think of another game that connects you to the character you're playing through the movement the way Metroid Prime does. There really just aren't any other games like it. All three games are excellent and worth your time. It might be tricky if you want to play the original GameCube versions of the first two, as your only option is to find used copies. Your easiest option is the Metroid Prime Trilogy Collection for the Wii a great package that remastered the first two games with motion controls. The Wii controls are actually quite good, but it's understandable if the very idea of motion controls is off-putting to you. Maybe someday we'll finally get that Switch port we keep hearing rumors about, but for now, you can pick up Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii U for $19.99. I did say I was going to talk about all the mainline Metroid games, which means I do have to mention Metroid Other M. Up until this point, the Metroid series has had a pretty great track record. Even the ones I don't recommend, Metroid 1 and 2, they aren't bad games, they just haven't aged the best. Other M was a mess from day one, and it has earned a reputation as not only the worst Metroid, but at the time it seemed to be responsible for the death of the franchise. Other M's biggest selling point, and also its biggest problem, is the story. Other M goes even further than Fusion did, making cutscenes and dialogue a major part of the game. It's the kind of shift that makes Metroid into something it's not, and the story that is there isn't very good, with some really rough voice acting, particularly from actor Jessica Aaron Martin, who voices Samus. Thanks to the hyperbeam, which was given to me somehow by the baby. The baby. The baby. The baby. The baby. The baby. This would be forgivable if the gameplay was good, but unfortunately it suffers from a forced controller scheme gimmick. You can only play the game with a Wiimote, no nunchuck. So you run around holding the Wiimote horizontally using the D-pad to move in a 3D environment, which yes, is as awkward and uncomfortable as it sounds. During combat, you can adjust the Wiimote vertically, switching the view from third person to first person, where you then have more precise aim at enemies, but can no longer move. Which again, is as awkward as it sounds. The game has a lot of other issues with its design, like a severe reduction in exploration, but for me, the fundamental act of playing this game is so awkward and uncomfortable, I would say avoid it for that reason alone. But if you are interested, your only option outside of buying a physical copy is the Wii U Store for $19.99. And finally, we wrap back around to 2D Metroid with 2017's Samus Returns. 
co-developed by Nintendo and Mercury Steam, best known for the Castlevania Lords of Shadow series, Samus Returns is a remake of Metroid 2 for the Nintendo 3DS. The game sticks to the classic side-scrolling perspective, but this time with 3D graphics. The game remains faithful to the spirit of the original while tuning its map and design to the style of Super Metroid. A number of new features for the series are added, such as full 360 degree aiming, and the inclusion of a melee counter move. This gives the combat a slightly faster, more action feel, and makes Samus that much deadlier. Overall, Metroid Samus Returns is an excellent return to form for the series. It gets a strong recommendation from me, particularly if you're interested in Dread, which is also being developed by Mercury Steam and carries over the same gameplay style established here. Right now, the game is only available for the 3DS, with a digital copy running you $39.99. Let's hope that Nintendo will one day port the game over to the Switch. So there you have it. We have 10 mainline Metroid games, with 7 that I would personally recommend checking out, which, yeah, is still a lot. However, if your interest is to solely get caught up for Metroid Dread, you can ignore the Prime trilogy for now and save those closer to the release of Metroid Prime 4. Four games still seems like a lot in only a month's time, so I'm going to kind of give a recommendation for why I think each one is worth checking out, and you can decide for yourself. First up is Metroid Zero Mission. Like I said, I think it is the perfect starting point for the series. It's a great game, it's a great introduction to Metroid without being too difficult, but also still having some of that exploration to it. The only thing is that it's kind of tough to get your hands on without a Wii U. And because of that, I think the overall best one to pick up is Super Metroid. It's the game that started it all, it's a classic for a reason, and it's really easy to get your hands on. If you have a Nintendo Switch and you have an online account, you have Super Metroid. Next up, I would recommend Samus Returns. It does require you to have a Nintendo 3DS, and it is the most expensive of all of these games here, but it is the one that is going to feel the most like Metroid Dread because it's developed by that same studio and is carrying over a lot of those same mechanics. And finally, Fusion. I recommend this one because of the story. It is the game that canonically takes place right before Metroid Dread, and because of that, a lot of the events of Fusion are going to carry over to that game. Specifically, Samus's AI ship Atom is making a return along with the SAX, so there's a lot of connections between those games, and if that's what you're interested in, you should definitely at least check out Fusion. Of course, if you just want to get fully caught up on the story of Fusion, we actually have a complete Metroid timeline in the works that will break down everything you need to know about Samus Aran and her many adventures. I'll be sure to provide a link to it once it's released. All right, everybody, those are my recommendations. If there's anything you take away from this video, play some dang Metroid games. Metroid games are great. It's my favorite Nintendo franchise, and I really just think you can't go wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.